and a half. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. Don't forget, folks, Steve does an outstanding show here every trading day, as well as an outstanding newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to hit newsletters. You're going to see it right on the right-hand side, Mastering Probability. You can get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $6.95, which is the savings of $199 at 22%. And you can get it for one full year for $11.95, which is the savings of $593 at 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. We have the target all the sale going on. When you get Steve's newsletter, folks, okay, you're going to get all the tools that he also works with each and every day. It's an amazing newsletter. You've got a huge amount of tools. You're going to have a field day. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Football night in Miami. That's what's going on. Yes, that's a fact. That's... And we've got really great weather. I mean, I... It really cooled down here. I've got to imagine it's the same up there. It, it's that's why. It, yes, it's it's beautiful out. It's uh, this that's is. Why we live in Florida. That's right. That's right, man. No doubt. And it's clear. There's no humidity, folks. And it's like yeah. you know, 65. We'll take yeah. it. We'll yeah, take exactly, it. Exactly. Exactly. So looking forward to that. Oh, there, there's two football games going on at the same time tonight. But uh, my eyes will be glued to the Miami game. So oh, yeah. hopefully, hopefully, you know, they're playing against the Titans. Titans have a losing uh, uh, record at this stage here. So uh, hopefully the Dolphins are able to come through. I think the Dolphins, have, they're one of the top teams that have played Monday night football teams. But I think most of those Monday night games were older, you know, years ago versus oh, in, the, I mean, in the last remember, five years. I mean, the so. Dolphins, yeah, people lived and died. But they still do. But, that, yeah. you know, there's no doubt that sure. that brand is huge, man. Yes. Absolutely huge. Yeah. 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 So I thought we'd start uh, we really kind of focus in on the Dow today. OK. And uh, and I thought what we'd do here is just start with a blank chart. So that's what we've got up on our screen here. Now, this is a monthly time frame chart. So what we're going to be looking at is going to give us a, maybe a bigger overview of what the Dow is uh, trying to do out here. So let's start by adding a few decorations to this blank chart. And the first decoration that we're going to add is uh, horizontal trading ranges. Yes. So Bud Rolfs, yeah, uh, you know who, who, as you know, was doing the show here. How long? Did you, how long was he doing the show for TFNN? He did a show what? at least ten years. Yeah, and yeah. he introduced he introduced the the primary trading range, right? Uh, primary trading ranges, which he did uh, a lot visually. And what he was doing there, folks, was he was looking for the largest number of co-located opens or closes. So we're just looking at the open or close of a bar. And in fact, if you take a look at this chart here, Tom, this shows us on a monthly basis, the largest congestion of opens and closes all the way down at 10,564. There were 50 of them. Wow. So what I did was I automated this tool to identify within a, within a small range uh, the, the number of opens and closes because that really sets up the horizontal trading range or the primary trading range. On a monthly base, the second most number is actually up at the 17,884 level. So that's quite a wide quite a wide trading range. So my tool allows us to go ahead and put midpoint lines, which are those little dashed ones that are in there. They're still just as important. Yes. And so here, what this is telling us, now this is a monthly time frame, folks, and we can see that the key level that price is trading into right now, a horizontal trading range at 36,185. Uh, so that's going to be really important come the end of the month. If price closes above it, it's going to bring the 39,846 level into play. These are diagonal lines. So these lines here come all the way back to the 2009 time frame, and they give us uh, another price channel. So what I first do here, Tom, is I establish the first price channel by looking at the lows, and I'm connecting here. I'm also connecting the largest number of opens and closed bodies that I can find, and I do the same thing at the top. So the, the red horizontal lines are equal in distance apart, and the same thing for these rising price channels out here. So this tells us that a close above the 39,846 uh, area, or a, a close above 36,185, we might get beyond 39,846. Now, it's a monthly time frame. This is not happening tomorrow, but it's good to understand what the bigger picture is. We've got an additional rising price channel. So that's the blue diagonal lines that I pushed in here. And what we can see here is that and these diagonal lines were established. Now, this is I've, uh, the, the green ones I use, the actual bodies of the candle. 
in the blue ones, I went ahead with a trend line. I'm using the low of the actual bars out there. And so here I've tied in the 2020 low to the lows uh, here in the, uh, looks like the October timeframe of 2022 out there. But what we can see is that price pulled back in October, November of this year and found support at that rising price channel. So that's a bullish signal out there. But before we get all giddy, what we're going to do is add one more set of price channel lines. And that's a falling, a slightly falling price channel. And what we can see right now is price is really up against the key resistance level. So we want to go ahead and keep an eye on that. If price takes that out, that's more of a clue that we're likely headed up towards that 39,846 level. Here's the full Dow chart with its channel lines. That way folks that are watching us on Tiger TV, they can you know, stop the frame, take a snapshot, and then they'll have these horizontal trading ranges and they can go ahead and add this stick nice. right there chart out there. So here's that's the full plethora yeah. of, of, of uh, lines. So speaking of resistance, the daily, now we've switched over here to daily Dow, to daily Dow charts, really. And I've got the Dow chart. I've got the cash index, index that's on the uh, far, far left. Next to that is the equity future contract. Next to that is the Dow diamonds. And then there's actually an equal weighted ETF for the Dow, which is important to take a look at. It's called EDOW. So this helps us understand now what I can show. What I can share with you here is we see blue diagonal or blue horizontal lines for the uh, Dow Jones Cash Index, the, the Equity Future Contract, and Dow Diamond. Those are representing TD9 count tops, which are likely to get negated today. And that tells us about a strong upward momentum move. So if the if the cash index closes above 36.292, it'll negate that pattern. The Future Contract, 36.703, and the Dow Diamond's 363.55. So negating that topping pattern then tells us we really don't have a top. Well, sort of. Because what we also have out here in a couple of the in a couple of the uh, instruments, the Dow Equity Future Contract has wave number seven. That's a very small portion of the uh, Chapman wave, and the EDOW has that as well. Now the only ways those get confirmed is when we get a lower high out there. So as long as highs continue. Uh, out here each and every day, that will that pattern will just continue to move along. But if we get a lower high, then at least two of those instruments will have that topping signal. From a 126-year perspective, the Dow enters its final year-end bullish cycle this Thursday. Oh, boy. And it runs up th <laughs> through the end of the year, really runs up to this red arrow here, Tom, okay. in the first week of January. Um, so this is what it's done over a 126-year period of time. Wow. Um, so maybe that, uh, you know, and we don't necessarily use these right to the day. Yes. But this tells us what's transpired over a 126-year period of time. 2024 is a presidential cycle year. So I'll leave people with this. Maybe I'll finish doing this uh, tomorrow during tomorrow's show out here. This also shows us moving higher into the early part of January. But look what happens after that time. This is basically 31 years worth of those presidential cycle years. Okay. And this shows us perhaps going down into the mid-June time frame. We ride him, cowboy. It looks like we ride him, cowboy, into the New Year, Steve. That's it. That's what I'm thinking. I'm, I'm telling you, it's something else, isn't it? It's just it a is. grind, a grind, a grind, man. That's amazing. Listen, man, you have a great one, safe one. Appreciate the education. Look forward to the show tomorrow, Steve. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.